Module 7, General Health and Safety Considerations. Upon the completion of Module 7, participants should be able to determine the potential spill control methods, proper personal protective equipment, and detection and monitoring devices for responding to ethanol blended fuel incidents. Understanding the properties and characteristics of both gasoline and ethanol will help emergency responders mitigate incidents involving ethanol blended fuels. Gasoline blended with up to 10% ethanol will retain hydrocarbon fuel chemical characteristics. Absorbents and booms that are designed to pick up polar solvents should be used if available. When water is introduced to a gasoline ethanol blend, phase separation may start to take place. Phase separation occurs after the fuel blend reaches the water saturation point. The water will then attract the ethanol and form a water ethanol solution in the bottom of the tank. In this situation, an oil type boom or absorbent will pick up the remaining gasoline on top leaving the water ethanol solution. It is important to recognize the various types of spill control measures that may be needed in an emergency response. Different tactics will be needed for land spills versus water spills. It is also important to recognize what type of spill containment products will be needed. It is important to notify the appropriate local, state, and or federal authorities having jurisdiction of an incident in the event of a spill. Best practices would be to establish good working relationships with these organizations who have statutory responsibilities and or functional capabilities well in advance of an incident. This ensures a more proactive incident response instead of a reactive incident response, which will place emergency responders and the community at a potentially greater risk. The water ethanol solution can be picked up with water absorbing boom or absorbent. Keep in mind that depending on the water to ethanol ratio, the solution may still be flammable. Also remember that if an AR foam blanket is used to contain the ethanol blended fuel vapor, a portion of the foam solution will absorb into the ethanol blended fuel forming a solution that sinks below the gasoline level. This solution again will have water ethanol properties which will require a water type boom or absorbent. The ethanol blended fuel located just below the foam membrane will require an oil type absorbent since the ethanol gasoline blend will still maintain hydrocarbon characteristics. Control zones are the areas established around a hazardous material incident and indicate the safety level and degree of hazard in that specific zone. Control zones are initially established using the U.S. DOT Emergency Response Guidebook. There are three control zones that must be established, hot, warm, and cold. The hot zone is located immediately around the release of the material. This area encompasses materials that are hazards. It is the area of greatest danger and contamination. It is commonly referred to as the zone immediately dangerous to life and health, or IDLH. The warm zone is located immediately outside of the hot zone and is the area where decontamination takes place. The cold zone begins where the warm zone ends. The command post as well as other support functions are located in the cold zone. Personal protective clothing in this area may be limited to safety equipment and normal working clothes. After the control zones are established, detection and monitoring are used continuously to refine and or modify the perimeter of the control zones as the incident changes. Detection and identification of hazardous materials using monitoring equipment is normally performed by responders at the technician specialist level. Monitoring equipment is a crucial resource for responders to use during an ethanol blended fuel incident for assessment and mitigation. Monitoring equipment will help responders determine the vapor concentration levels of hazardous materials and make response decisions based on these readings. Utilizing a multi-gas meter can detect lower explosive limit, carbon monoxide, 
hydrogen sulfide, and oxygen. Monitor readings will help responders determine how best to protect themselves and others from the effects of the material and how far the public should be removed from the contaminated area. The use of two multi-gas detectors allows the responders to focus on each individual aspect of the ethanol blended fuel incident. One responder focuses on hydrocarbon identification, while the second responder focuses on ethanol identification. Since current multi-gas detectors are not smart and therefore cannot identify the gas or vapor being analyzed, the use of two detectors helps minimize confusion as to which vapor or gas has been detected and what conversion factor must be applied. Ethanol and ethanol blended fuel burn similarly to gasoline fires. Therefore, it is critical that all responders wear appropriate firefighter PPE. Protective clothing is designed to protect the wearer from head to toe and has proven to reduce the severity of injuries as well as save the lives of many firefighters. The following components constitute a general set of firefighter PPE. Protective hood, turnout coat, turnout pants, gloves, boots, and respiratory protection. Respiratory protection is especially critical since the respiratory system is the primary route of exposure into the body for hazardous chemicals. There are three types of respiratory protection, air purifying respirators and powered air purifying respirators, supplied air respirators, and self-contained breathing apparatus. Remember that all personnel responding to a spill or fire must wear and be trained in the use of specific PPE required for a given emergency. Post-response decontamination is required to prevent contamination outside the incident zones or secondary contamination. Decontamination should include surfactant and water-based cleaner. All decontamination runoff should be contained, tested, and disposed of properly. In this module, we learned that regardless of whether you are confronted with a spill or fire, there are certain procedures that must be followed to ensure safe incident management. Knowing the type of fuel that has been spilled or is burning is essential to the success of your operation. In addition, you should take steps to contain this incident. If offensive foam operations are going to be initiated, then appropriate quantities of AR, AFFF foam concentrate and the necessary foam application equipment must be obtained and staged at the incident scene. Personnel must be trained in advance on how to utilize the specialized foam firefighting equipment. It is very critical that all emergency responders wear the appropriate PPE when responding to emergencies involving ethanol blended fuels.